In section 2.7, we're going to look at how we solve equations in one variable, but specifically how we solve rational equations in one variable. So sticking with the second half of this chapter's theme, uh, beginning with rational functions in the last section, we're going to look mainly at rational equations now in this section. Um, so equations that have fractions in them, fractions that involve um, the variable x located on top and bottom of the fraction, and how do we solve those? All right, first example, solve the rational equation. Uh, we can see that it is a rational equation. There is one term written as a fraction, so that trumps them all and makes this a rational equation. Um, the technique that I like to use, and we've seen this before, this is not new, it's just new with x's in the denominator, is I'm going to multiply Um, by a least common denominator. Okay. I'm going to multiply by a least common denominator. So here, that would mean multiplying by x. Okay. So that x is going to distribute here to that term and to that term there. Okay, so let me just write what it would look like. I would have 1x divided by x minus 4x squared equals 3x. Um, because I used a common denominator, it ensures that the term that had a fraction loses its fractional denominator. Okay, so I'm now left with 1 minus 4x squared equals 3x. I'm going to try and solve that equation. I'm going to make it equal to 0. So I have positive 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. I'm going to try and factor that. So 4x times x is 4x squared. If I go with plus 1 here and minus 1, that will add to the 3x in the middle. So we get x equals one-fourth and x equals negative one. Okay, and there are solutions to this rational equation. Now, it's worth noting, real quick, because sometimes it will be the case, um, just reminding you that you cannot divide by zero. So let's look now at the original problem right here. Would either of these numbers when plugged in for x make the denominator of that fraction be 0? And the answer is no, they would not. So these are in fact our solutions. As long as they don't make any term of this problem divisible by 0, then we keep them as answers. All right, this next problem I again begin by multiplying by a common denominator. The common denominator is x and x plus 1. So that x, x plus 1 is going to distribute here, here, and there. Okay, so again, I'll let me write how that would look. I would have 1x, x plus 1 over x plus 1 x, x plus 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 x, x plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to divide out everything that can reduce, everything that can divide out. So this x takes away that one, this x plus 1 takes away this x plus 1, and what's left behind is an equation that does not have fractions. I have 1 times x plus 1, which is x plus 1, plus 1 times x, which is x, equals x times x plus 1, which is x squared plus x. Uh, so I've got on this side 2x plus 1 equals x squared plus x. I'm going to make it equal to 0. So I have x squared minus x minus 1 now I check to see if that can factor. This does not factor. If it does not factor, 
that means, that doesn't mean that there aren't answers. It just means that those answers aren't found by factoring. Um, how do we solve a quadratic equation that doesn't factor? And the answer is we use quadratic formula. We haven't seen this formula in a while, so let's just go ahead and run through it to get the practice. So negative b is 1 plus minus square root of, I want negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 over 2 times 1. So I get 1 plus minus square root, this is 4, 1, so 5 over 2. There's my x equals solutions. Those numbers, when plugged in for the x's here, would not make divisible by 0, would not, would not make divide by 0. So these numbers are good, and there are solutions. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do in this problem is I'm going to start by factoring anything that I see that can factor. And generally, that's always my first step, is, uh, is there something that can factor. And if there is, I'm going to do that. So I've got 4 over x minus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2 equals 3 over, and this will factor as x minus 4 x minus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply everything by the common denominator. And the common denominator is an x minus 2 and an x minus 4. Just slip all this in there. Okay, so we cancel everything that cancels. All right, so what is left behind? We have 4 times x minus 4, 4x minus 16. We have, let's look here, be careful, plus negative would be safer. Negative 1 times x minus 4 is negative x plus 4 equals 3. So we get 3x minus 12 equals 3. So it's 3x equals um, what is that? 15. So x equals 5. Okay. Now I'm, I'm a little confused as to the title of this slide. It says eliminating extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions would be extra solutions and I don't think that I have any extra solutions in this case, as I don't think that I made a mistake. Um, I'm just quickly double checking all my work while I'm talking to you here, and I don't see any mistakes. So that's weird. I don't think we have any extraneous solutions. What I'm looking for is, does this number here that I solved to, for, does it make any of these denominators be zero? and it doesn't. Um, so I think this is the answer. If I'm wrong, somebody please tell me in class what the mistake is, but just going through it pretty quick, I don't see that I made a mistake anywhere. All right, this next one is also titled Eliminating Extraneous Solutions. So let's have a go at this one. I again look and see if I can factor any denominator, and this one factors with a common factor x times x plus 2. Okay, so we're seeing it like that. And so I can see that my common denominator, what I'm going to multiply to everything, is an x, x plus 2. So that's coming here, here here, and to there. Okay. So what does it look like? I'm just going to, again, I'm going to write out the whole thing because I want you to see exactly what this looks like before we start canceling out. I have the x minus 3 times x times x plus 2 
all over x plus, and I have 3 times x, let's put that in parentheses, times x plus 2 all over x plus 2. I've got the 6 times the x times the x plus 2 all over x, x plus 2. And I have 0 times x times x plus 2. Okay, so there it is. You can see that I've multiplied the same common denominator onto every term. And I'm going to cancel out what I can. So those are gone. Out. Out there. And this, of course, times 0 is still just going to be 0. But So what am I left with? x minus 3 times x plus 2 is x squared minus x minus 6 plus this is 3x plus 6 equals 0. So I end up with x squared plus 2x equals 0. If I factor to solve that, we get x equals 0 and x equals negative 2. Now, it just so happens that those are the exact two numbers that I don't want. Because when I plug 0, and for this x, it makes divide by 0, so I don't want that. When I plug negative 2 in for this x, negative 2 plus 2 makes 0. I don't want that either. So the only two answers that I got are, in fact, not answers to the problem. So this problem has no solution. All right, one more for you to try. Um, try this completely on your own. Um, so what I would do is pause the video and then replay when you finished. I'm going to show my work as well, but I'm not going to show all of my work. So if you're relying on just copying down my steps, uh, you might get lost in some spots. So I would show every step that we've been showing every step, especially on that last problem that we did. Uh, and then what you should see in my, <clears throat> my solution is some of your work along the way. All right, hopefully you got the correct answer. Uh, if you didn't, just see me in class and I can discuss and look at your work and see if there's a mistake made somewhere and we can uh, try and correct it together.